Our husbands, they come steal our wives, they come steal their attention, then they come and steal our devotion. What a life. TikTok addiction, cleaning. Hey, my beloved, if you are addicted to drugs, the way to get rid of the addiction is not to throw away the drugs that you have in the house. If you are addicted to alcohol, the way to get over the addiction to the alcohol is not for you to flush it down the drain. It's for you to keep it there where there is access and you work on yourself. So the way to get rid of a TikTok addiction, keep the app there, work on yourself. Because when you are going to download the app again, there is nobody that's going to tell you, ah, this is too much screen time. This is too much. This is too much. When you flush that bottle of alcohol in the drain, they are still selling there. Somebody can still come to your house with a bottle. So you don't work on the problem. It's not working on the problem. Promise. Good morning, Apostle and family. Good morning unto you. Daughter says, good morning. Greetings, Apostle, rather, and family greetings unto you in the name of the Lord. Sister Amu, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Sister Ndo, good morning, Apostle. Um, how you, uh, how are you this morning? Looking good as usual. You know the plug. You know the plug. Prophetess Leslie, we greet you in the name of the Lord. Sister Ndo says, I was starting to worry. It's good. It shows that, you know, I'm active. It shows that I'm active when I'm not active. That's a good thing. That's a good sign. Okay, RJ, good morning, family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tiana, profound advice. Tibiti, good morning, Apostle. Miss Mabasso, good morning, Apostle. Hey, family. What's the theme of this week? What is the theme of this week? And I try to keep this very short. What is the theme of this week? Uh, we're not yet at 15 or more. Wait and be this. Na defiance be that. Na disobedience be that. Mm? Investing and devoting yourself in scriptural knowledge. Investing and devoting yourself into scriptural knowledge. Our apostle is wearing Kalayama Nyora. That is why she's glowing this much. You know me and Blake. You know me and Blake. Hmm? You know me and Blake. Right? I mean, I think I should just start wearing black every time here. <laughs> seems to make you happy. It seems to give you motivation, inspiration. <laughs> yeah? to, to, to not wear makeup. Do not put on fake things, Blake. I think I should start wearing more Blake. Right. So that you can understand. Hold it, Blake. Get color, your manure. All right. So the theme of this week. Investing and devoting yourself in scriptural knowledge. Scriptural knowledge. Um, is not a revelation if it goes against scripture. Type that in the comment section. Let somebody see it multiple times it's not a revelation if it goes against scripture it's not it is not the apostle paul was not there in the physical ministry of jesus christ but we are very sure that the apostle paul had the holy spirit he did not say anything that contradicted the holy spirit and when he spoke of himself he clearly said i not the lord it's not a revelation if it goes against scripture. <clears throat> you saying, I'm going to, uh, if you want me to pray for you, here's some oil, here's some salt, here's some bangle, here's some candle. It's not from the Holy Spirit of God. It's not from the Papa of Jesus Christ. Now, now from your own Papa, Eh? from your own daddy <laughs> right it's not from god because god will not give you a revelation that goes against his scripture god 
gives us revelation into what is written. I'm telling you, God gives us revelation into what is written. Mm. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul did not know what Jesus Christ was busy saying there. But he spoke about what Jesus Christ was busy saying there. So for him, it was a revelation. And we all agree that it was a revelation. Those that put together the Bible agreed that it was a revelation. Why? Because it merged with scripture. It merged with scripture. So it's not a revelation if it goes against scripture. So belief is not a revelation. I was driving behind the car with a picture of their pastor. I thought of you. You should have bumped it to teach them something. <laughs> you should have back in the bank. You should have bowed would pray for the case to go away. You should have bumped it. To show them that almost stick and no go protect you from the wrath of the road. Now prayer only. Where if we do that? You should have just come little. seen many cars uh, in accidents <laughs> in accidents with stickers multiple and I said that's right I pray they're not hate but that's right to show I wanted to you are my daughter you are my daughter you are sent to go and witness about the written way of God you should have just ah, just a little some they say oh sorry my brakes <laughs> Hey, our mono sticker is going to protect you. The Bible says when we are sick, we should call the elders of the church to come and pray for us and anoint our heads with oil. There is a sequence of all. There is prayer first. Jesus Christ said when you fast, put oil on your head. So is that oil the one that's fasting? Mm? So kindly, 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 kindly. It's not a revelation if it goes against scripture. It must be scriptural. Your friends there, they are busy selling things in the house of God. And they are saying, I received it from the Holy Spirit. That I might sell a bottle of Excella cooking oil. 50 mils. For 200. For 500. Your God is an exploiter of the poor. While the Bible says, has God not chosen the poor among you to make rich in the kingdom of God? While Jesus Christ overturned the tables of the money changers? Somebody will say, well, we need to use this oil in the church. Those doves that Jesus Christ set free there when he was overturning tables of the money changers, those doves were not to go and draw pictures. Uh -huh, they've worked. Those doves were to be used inside because there would be sacrifices. For the poor families, you would buy doves. You would take doves for sin offering, whatever. Sebastian is about to scream because now he has nothing to do. Let's get straight into the word of God today. The theme of this week is investing and devoting ourselves to scriptural knowledge. Scriptural knowledge. Let's get straight into it. Our title for today. Our title for today. Hey, Supersonic. And he doesn't know where his phone is. Let me get this boy his phone because he's going to bother us a lot. Boy, his phone. 
it's for because he's going to bother us a lot rightfully so what is he gonna do give me a lot rightfully so what is he gonna do give me a lot rightfully so what is he gonna do give me My network. Mm? Yay. Good God of mercy. Papa. Oh. Okay. Alright. We're back on, eh? Let's go. Are we back on? Full of surprises. Call me for dinner. Eh? <laughs> Your support, Sebastian's phone was hidden, Lena. I had to. I'm like, oh God. Oh God. All right, we're back on. We thank God. So check this out now. Check this out. Okay. The theme of this week is. Let's have that theme of this week pinned again. Let's have that theme pinned again for us. Investing. And devoting yourself into scriptural knowledge. E? Investing and devoting yourself into scriptural knowledge. We've spoken about the Bible. Christianity was not meant for non-Jews. We have spoken about how... Um, what did we speak about yesterday? Let me check my notes. We spoke about on Monday, 
God uses the youngest. On Tuesday, we spoke about the subject of grace, right? And today, we're going to talk about gifts and their deception. Gifts and their deception. Gifts, gifts and their deception. Gifts and their deception. Gifts and their deception. Gifts and their deception. Okay, that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. That's what we're going to be talking about. Gifts and their deception is today's title. Okay, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and King Jesus Christ, God, help us. Help us through your spirit to understand today's word, to understand every single thing that you want to say to us for our edification, our correction, and our confirmation. Holy Spirit, me, I know nothing, but you know all things. Huh? Please. Help us. Help us. Amen. Amen and amen, right? Okay, let's get straight into it. So now, check this out. Check this. Now, there are a lot of us, there are a lot of us that confirm... That's my brother in the back. There are a lot of us that confirm whether somebody is a true servant of God or not by how that person can prophesy, cast out demons, what else? Cast out demons, heal the sick, hmm? and do all these other things. There are most of us, <laughs> there are most of us, there he is walking away. There are most of us, he's going to find supersonic there. There are most of us who use people's gifts, people's gifts to determine how great they are as servants of God, yeah. to determine whether they are even servants of God. If a person can prophesy and we see them prophesying accurately, we say, ah, that one is a servant of God. If you hear that so and so and so is healing sick people there, you say, ah, that one is a servant of God. That is dangerous. Very dangerous. It is very deceptive. That is very deceptive. The gifts and the manifestations can be very deceptive. Many of us, just because we found out that so and so can prophesy. We went to go and get loans there. The deception and the gift. Hmm? The gifts and their deception. Write this in the comment section. It is dangerous to gauge if God is with somebody by how they operate in their gifts. It is dangerous to use a person's gift to see, to conclude rather, to conclude on how God is with them. Let's put it like this. On how God is with them. It is dangerous to use a person's gifts to conclude on how God is with them. Lord, forgive us. We are learning a lot, yo. Hey, it is dangerous to use a person's gift to conclude on how God is with them. You'll go to hell while knowing a very great prophet. Prophet, you will go to hell. While prophesying people's underwear, people's tomatoes in their fridges. That is the gift and their deception. That is the gift and their deception. I used to be deceived by the gift. Me, Omo, big girl, fine babe. I used to be deceived by the gift. I used to be deceived. I used to go and fornicate they. 
making my private part into a public part. Oh, what a life. And then I would tell myself, I will go and see when I get to service. If I can still prophesy the same, God is okay with me. Oh my, I would get there and do greater. And I would say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it means the subject of grace. Yeah? 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 Servants of God, you go and you do bad things there. You go and you do bad things there. Then you say, I will go and see when I get to service. If people still manifest demons, I'm still good. I was that imbecile. Oh, mommy. Fine, babe. I was that imbecile. I would go and make my private part a public part thing. Then I would tell myself, I will go and see the at church there when I get there. If God is still with me. If I see demon rolling, manifesting, God is still my friend. If I can still prophesy, God is still my friend. I would get there and do greater than I did last week. The gifts and their deception. The gifts and their deception. The gifts and their deception. That is what we're talking about today. The gifts and their deception. It is not only the congregation that can be deceived by the gift. It is also the leader of the congregation. Type that in the comment section. It is not only the congregation that can be deceived by the gift. It is also the leader of the congregation. Everybody they that I was leading they was deceived into thinking she is incorrect standing with God. And not only them, but me also. I was deceived into thinking because the gift is still operating. I am in correct standing with God. I'm in correct standing with God. There goes Sister Munene. It is not only the congregation that can be deceived by the gifts. The leader can also be deceived. That's a fact. That's a fact. Everybody can be deceived. Everyone. Eh, uh -huh. Mama Munene, that's correct. That's very correct. It's because we don't want to read the word of God for ourselves, but praises be unto the Lord Almighty. Eh? That he raised talk house. I'm here to tell you. So all those years there that have been in ministry, it all works together for those who believe. I went through it. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not just talking from the word sense. I'm talking from experience. I would fornicate. You don't understand what I'm saying. Maybe let me let me explain what I was saying. Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night, Saturday night, unmarried. I was busy playing Piki Piki Mabelan. Eh? Omo Tlof Tlof. Eh? Sunday morning. I was behind the pulpit. Sunday morning, fine babe, behind the pulpit. Even ushers needed to be caught by the congregation. Bona, there was a move. There was a move. Prophecy. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Two weeks from now. Three days from now. People who had issues of blood, it was stopping right there. And I said, oh, my je, ah, ah. Do I not get this strength from this cloth trophy? Because oh more how come the gifts and their deception. Family, we need to be so careful. Yo, we need to be so if I had died in that time, I was going straight to hell. Front row seat. Oh more what? Eh? I was going straight to hell. Straight. I was going straight there. There would be no time for judging or anything. There would be no need. There would be no need. No need. And now because the people, they knew that the woman of God, eh, hey, Omo anointed. She has a gift. Eh? I would try and pray for them, not touching them. They say, ah, apostle. apostle. I said, ah, ah. So I said, mm. 
if it was somebody that I knew, I'd say, okay. But if I don't know you, I'd just say, yeah. Eh? The gifts and their deception. Family, let us read the word of God. Let us read the word of God. First subheading. There is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. Let's write that down and be blessed. There is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. There is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. There is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. Irregardless of where you stand, there is power in the name of Jesus. Irregardless of you believe in him, you don't believe in him, you are an atheist, you are a heathen, you are... You can even be a candle. There is power in the name of Jesus to go, it burns out. The name of Jesus has power and it is irregardless of where you stand. It is irregardless of what you have done. It is irregardless of what you will do tomorrow. There is power in the name of Jesus. The power that is in the name of Jesus does not depend on who you are. It does not depend on your shortcomings or your upcomings. It does not depend on your weakness or your strength. There is just power in the name of the Son. There is power in the name of Jesus and it does not depend on who you are, what you are doing, where you've been. There is power in the name of Jesus. We are going to use the sons of Sceva to understand what I'm saying. Let us go to Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 20. Let us go to Acts chapter 19. Who's that? Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 20. Ah, my brother didn't come alone. There are people who want to see me. Oh, because I was supposed to be done by nine. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, 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 people of God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 20. It's in my notes. Let me open it in my Bible. So I can go with you bit by bit, piece by piece. Hmm? The gifts and their deception. Oh, you'll go to hell or more prophesying. Hey. Let's read. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 20. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who were around driving out evil spirits, ah, this vision, NIV, these were exorcists. They were exorcists. You can study to be an exorcist. You can study to cast out demons. My favorite version says exorcists. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, I command you to come out. 14. Seven, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? 16. Then the, men, then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. 17. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. 18. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burnt them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 damas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. Um, let's dissect the word. Let's dissect the word. Hmm? 
let's dissect the word because there are some things I want to deal with here. Let's go back to verse 11 to 12. Verse 11 to 12. I can't pass it. God did extra, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. 12. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. They were not sold. They were not sold. They were not sold. These handkerchiefs were not sold. They were not sold. These handkerchiefs did not sleep somewhere for a few days. Or more shrine people. They did not sleep somewhere for a few days. They did not climb the mountain, these handkerchiefs. No. <laughs> these handkerchiefs did not climb the mountain. <laughs> Basically, somebody took handkerchief, their own handkerchief, touched Paul with it, took it home to their uncle. Eh? Eh? This fashion, anointed handkerchief. <laughs> I'm dealing with that fashion now. One, they were not sold. Two, they were not given by Paul to the people. They were not given by Paul to the people. They were not given by Paul to the people. Why? Paul knew the word of God. Paul knew the word of God. So kindly, let us refrain from using this verse Acts chapter 19 verse 9 verse, verse 11 to 12 as a reason to sell handkerchiefs or more anointed handkerchief. And this is your reference scripture. You are a charlatan. You are a false prophet. You are an enemy of Jesus Christ. These handkerchiefs, the people were there, they touched the handkerchiefs. Those handkerchiefs touched Paul. Touched Paul. Then they left with them. Then they left with them. The deception now there of the gift will be those people with the handkerchiefs there thinking God is in the handkerchief. Oh, God is in the handkerchief. God is in the handkerchief. God is in the bones of Elisha. These handkerchiefs were not sold. Neither were these handkerchiefs handed out by Paul. Like sweets. Say, mm, handkerchief, omo, omo. You are, ah, take it on credit, omo. No. No, no, and no. Okay? All right. Let us move. Let us move. Why did we come to this scripture? We came to this scripture because we wanted to look at we wanted to look at the sons of Skiva. In our point that it does not matter where we are. It does not matter our stance. The name of Jesus carries power. Let me dissect it with the family. The sons of Skiva, they were exorcists. Had no business with God. Had no business with Jesus Christ. They just saw. They just saw. That at the mention of this name, things happened. And indeed, they mentioned the name and things happened. And things happened. The demon manifested. The demon manifested. Just like most of us. Just because we mentioned the name on our grandmother's way when they were sick and they were healed, we then went to go and open a church. You mention the name of Jesus to a certain situation. And the name of Jesus had power. It worked. So you said, ah, how much is it to hire a tent? <laughs> the gifts. The gifts and their deception. You got there to the, ah, how much is it to hire a tent? And what happens, what happened to the sons of Skiva has been happening to you. We've been seeing your videos. Eh? Demons manifesting and they, they, they want to do Kung Fu with you. We've been seeing your videos. Why is that happening? <laughs> it's because the name of Jesus 
carries power irregardless of your stance. But it will not end well. It will not end well. Life experience. The church where I started ministry, right? There was a prophet there. That prophet, this one faithful uh, night service, there was this lady who was a sangoma then. Oh, if she's speaking about sangomas, come and beat me. <laughs> so, this lady was a sangoma there, practicing sangoma. So she came to church. Don't know what led her, what led her there, but probably the Holy Spirit in her, you know, was fighting for her, for her to be delivered. Oh, um, the pastor started me. I was praying for the other people at the other side. He was holding the fort in the other side. So I hear commotion, big commotion. Ah. Oh, that Sangoma is holding the prophet by the hemp. You know what a hemp is? By the t-shade, by the shade. Hmm? By the shirt. Hem the button. Button down shirt. Like this. What's up? Yo, I was like, God, oh my, waiting. <laughs> I'm laughing now. I was not laughing then. I was not laughing. Do we have anybody from uh, Lusaka services? Eh? Held him by the washing. Like this. A lady holding up a man. Like this, Omo. Omo, tablet, tablet light. Like this. What do you think you are? Wait, 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 wait. So I hear commotion. Bona, Oba Mutweri, buttons started flying from the man of God's shirt. I said, remember me, I'm new in ministry. I don't even know the Bible, but I said, oh, what? This, this can't be right. Where is the God now? Eh? I said, no, this can't be right. So I went there. I went, like, it was big. It was a big thing. Chairs were everywhere. People were, it was commotion. It was commotion. So I went there and I stood there and I said, yeah, in the name of Jesus, when now? Hey, one face. Hey, you know this nonsense that they do. Hey, you are burning me. Hey, you are burning me. Hey, you are burning me. Then she fell, right? So when she fell, me, I'm thinking, ah, game over, Omo. Let us go and finish this once and for all. So when I go there, Omo, she rises like Undertaker. Oh! <laughs> I said, hey, I think I rushed into this. <laughs> so she stands up. Hey! Hey! Oh! How old am I? 21 years old. I'm too young for this. She goes. She's like. Who do you think you are? She asked me the same question. I said, uh-uh, my name is Nakomutsu now. I said, I'm the daughter. I'm the daughter of God. Oh, what I said, oh, no. Exuded confidence. And I said, I'm the daughter of God. And you have no place in this body. Right now, mm. come out. Game over. No, no. Game over, Kesan. But it did not end there. I wanted to understand Omo Jeje, you being my leader currently. How 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 were you not able to? How were you not able to? How were you not able to? Yeah? Yeah? The name of Jesus. So it means that my friend there. It means that my friend there. <laughs> it means that my friend there. Oh? Huh? My friend there, he knew that there's power in the name of Jesus. But now, the match there was a problem. Because when we read about the sons of Sceva, they were doing it. They were doing it. But now, this incident then happened. Do you understand? What does this show us? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. But be very careful, because the gifts... The power in the name of Jesus, it can be decept deceptive and it will lead you and others into a very bad place. Imagine if there was a again, if there was a, a person who said, ah, let me just go and try this Christianity thing that night. What would they, what, what would they have thought about Christianity? That Sangomas are more powerful. Do you see? So he was deceived by the fact that 
the name of Jesus has power. So he said, ah, it means I can deal with this. I can deal with this kind of person. And no, 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 Me, I've got, I've got that gift. When it comes to Sangomas, I've got that gift. I've prayed for many Sangomas. We've burnt up a lot of things. What happens there is that it's not a, it's, it's not a subject of grace. It's a subject of what has God called you for. Do you understand? It's a subject of what God has called you for. That is why even, even when I'm not in correct standing with God, even when I'm not in correct standing with God, when I was still making my private part a public part, I could still pray for them. Because the gift of God is without repentance. Do you understand? Now the deception there on my part was that I thought because the gift is there, it means that I'm okay with God. It means I'm okay with God. Which was not right. Which was not right. It would lead to where we are going now. Ne? So we have said there is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. There is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. And that is why the sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 to 20, their stance was terrible. They were exorcists, but we see that they were able to cast out demons. Not even to cast out, to invoke demons. We see it today in our churches that people are able to, to, to invoke demons, but they're not able to deal with them. That's why a whole service will drag with one person shouting, wah, wah. Man of God goes there, come out in the name of Jesus. It, it go, wah, wah. That's because there is power in the name of Jesus, irregardless of your stance. But when it comes to now, working out everything and finishing it <laughs> it needs a lot it needs a gift there's power in the name of jesus and that power can invoke and that power to some extent can heal depending on what's happening in that situation and how god feels about it right can happen can be healed many pastors today many prophets apostles and all these other people they've opened churches because they saw that, oh, there's power in the name of Jesus, but the gift was not there. There's power that is in the name of Jesus, and then there's a gift. There's power that is in the name of Jesus, and then there's a gift. There's power that is in the name of Jesus that does not care about your stance. Whether you're Christian, Muslim, whatever, Hindu, whatever, if you use that name, something will happen there. Something will happen there. Hmm? But now, it will happen to a certain extent. It will happen to a certain extent. Are you understanding? Because God cannot be mocked. God cannot be mocked. Hmm? I'll give you another example of what I'm trying to say. That God cannot be mocked. There is a man named, was it Simeon or Simon? Who wanted the Holy Spirit. So he offered the apostles money. People were receiving the Holy Spirit, but he didn't receive the Holy Spirit. Because they, the Holy Spirit, God knew that he was not going to receive the Holy Spirit for any good. But now to have the manifestations to go around casting out demons, healing the sick and whatnot. They deduced it from his sentence. Okay. So there's the name of Jesus that carries power irregardless of your stance. There are gifts that are without repentance. The gift cannot be taken away from you also, whatever it is that you do. The only thing that we can do is we can grieve the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. But the gifts, if you've got a gift, it won't be taken away from you. Okay. Now, we saw that with the sons of Sceva, that the name of Jesus has power, irregardless of where you are standing. It won't end well, but the name of Jesus has power. Now, <clears throat> because the name of Jesus has power, and because the gift of God is without repentance. We are going to have this scenario where Jesus Christ said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not heal demons? Did we not cast out demons in your name and heal the sick?
it won't be taken away. It's not a gift if when you do something wrong, it's taken away from you. Do you understand? God understands that concept. Let us go to Romans chapter 11, verse 29 first. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Romans chapter 11, verse 20, 29. Check what I'm, um, what I'm saying to you. So Romans chapter 11, verse 29 says, for God's, gift, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. NLT says, for God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Do you understand? It can never be withdrawn. Thus, I said to you, I used to go there. I used to go there and make my private part a public part and then tell myself, ah, I'll go and see at service. If I still minister the same at service, it means that God is still with me. Or my imbecile. Not, didn't, hey, I didn't know that the gifts of God. Romans chapter 11, verse 29, they are without repentance. They can't be withdrawn. Thus, the subject of this morning devotion is what? The gifts and their deception. The gifts and their deception. So if you are called into the ministry, you will still do ministry nice. But now I'm saying to you that in the end, it never ends well. It will never end well. Just as a person who uses the name of God in the, the, the name of Jesus, just as a person who uses the name of Jesus, but does not use it correct, uses it for selfish gain, like uh, to gain uh, accolades and all these other things, you know, to be seen and everything. It will never end well. Ask the sons of Sceva. It will never end well. And for those who have the call and the gift, let's see that indeed it will not end well. Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Let's go. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Does sexual perversion need healing? Or deliverance minister. No, 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 no. Just close your legs. Just close your legs. Matthew chapter 7 verse 22 to 23. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. The gifts and their deception. He said, this is the Lord speaking, author and finisher of almost faith. Yeah? He said, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So now check this. Let us make a deduction. These niggas, they are saying, did we not do this? In your name. Because the gift had deceived them. Am I teaching? Am I teaching somebody? Am I revealing something to somebody? Am I? Omo, congregation, am I helping you? Servants of God, am I helping you? Am I helping you today? Don't be like me. Fine babe imbecile. Hmm? Who thought? Hey. People of God, when, when I first started today's morning devotion and I said the gifts and their deception, people looked at me like, ah, finally she has fallen off. Finally she's revealing her true colors. Omo, 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 babe. This is why many will say to him on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? Heal the sick, cast out demons, listen, and perform many miracles. 
Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Let us be people who are graduates and look at things there. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, let's start there. Lord, Lord. Aren't you and your, 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 your pastors and your prophets and your apostles, they're telling one another that if you just declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will enter into the kingdom. Oh, well, these ones have said what? George, George. They said, Lord, Lord. They said, Lord, Lord, but they will be eight. They will be eight outside. Outside. Let's go. Did we not prophesy in your name? One. In your name, drive out demons. Two. In your name, perform many miracles. I started off this session for, to for today by saying, never ever you use a person's demonstrations there a person's accurate prophecy, a person's healing gift and whatnot to determine where they stand with God. Are you seeing it? Omo graduates, are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? Listen, Lord, Lord, cancels out this thing of a romance if you just believe uh, if you declare with your mouth that lord uh, that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god uh, uh, raised him from the dead you'll be saved oh um, you the bible is not just one verse read everything in there read the context right they said lord lord but they will be out did we not prophesy in your name so people can prophesy but they will still still not enter the kingdom they will still be denied by the lord did we not drive out demons you are busy looking at so and so because they can cast out demons you are saying that's a true servant of god oh gifts and their deception let's go and in your name perform many miracles what's the key thing that i want us to look at there it was done in his name and because it was his name it was doable it is his name that made the pot to do what the pot couldn't have done without his name. Which goes back to what I said initially to say, no matter your stance, the word of God retains its power. The name of God retains its power. No matter your stance. No matter your stance. We looked at the sons of Sceva. We looked at the sons of Sceva. And now we're looking at Jesus Christ talking about it. No matter your stance, no matter where you stand. And now he gives the reason. I love my Lord. He gives the reason as to why he says, I will tell them I never knew you. You evil doers. You evil doers. These niggas are confident to say, oh, hey Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and all these things? Why? Because the title of today's 12 morning devotion, their gifts and their deception. It's because of the title, their gifts and their deception. They feel bold to say, didn't we cast out demons in your name and in your name uh, do this, uh, perform many miracles? They feel bold. Why do they feel bold, children of God, brothers and sisters? They feel bold because they were deceived by what? Let me see in the comment section. They were deceived by what? They were deceived by what? Gifts. 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 Hmm? They were deceived by gifts. They were deceived by gifts. I say to you again, huh? as one who loves you, enough to give you the word, Do not use a person's gifts to gauge where they are standing with God. Because the name of Jesus Christ, irregardless of a person's stance, the name of Jesus retains its power. Because the gift of God is without repentance. It cannot be withdrawn. The call of God cannot be withdrawn. cannot be withdrawn. What then shall we say? What then shall we say if we cannot use the gifts 
to distinguish who is a true man of God and who is a false man of God. If we cannot use the gifts as men and women of God to distinguish where we stand with God, what then? What then is to become of us? Jesus Christ lets us know. Check your fruits. Check your fruits. Check your fruits. Let's go and this will be our last scripture. Matthew chapter 7. Let's take it from verse 15. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 to 20. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. I smell nice. Sorry, excuse me. I get it, you guys, you only bath when you're going to be exposed to people. You only wear cologne when you're going to be exposed to people. Yeah, I do it for myself. That's my husband. That's my nice. Sister Ndo, I mixed that barakat that you got me, Rouge, with YSL. Um, what's that perfume of mine? Some YSL. YSL perfume. Hey, it's a good combo. Praise God. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. If you want to see me, if you want to know me if you want to know me look at my mentees look at my mentees the reason why i release mentees like i don't know i release them like you know when you have swept and then you release that i release them as soon as i see that ah here i've been talking i've been praying i've been fasting i've been trying by all means but this one this one is almost false i release you I release you. Because you are a direct representation of who? You are a fruit of who? Who? Eh, eh, me. Have I ever cheated on my husband? Eh? Are you hearing that? Are you seeing any blogs saying, hey, 2023, Komoto uh, found cheating on her husband. Eh, have I divorced my husband? Eh? So you, where do you get it? Me as your parent. I'm not doing it. Where do you get it? Where do you get it? When I see that a mentee of mine somehow mm. does not show their teeth, they're always like, I discuss it. I say, Omo, Omo, when I was picking you there as a mentee, when you came and said you want mentorship, I looked at your teeth and I said, these teeth, they're nice. They can represent me. Where is, where is this? Where is this? Eh? You are. Hmm? Hmm? Listen. In order to see, servant of God, who you are, look at those that you lead, those that you are mentoring. Look at those that you are mentoring. You see yourself there. If you see whores there, you are a whore. You want my address to come and beat me? Huh? If the people that you are calling sons, daughters, you see whores there, you are a horse, eh? Ma'am, you are also a whore. If you look there and you see angry people, you see angry people, people who are selfish, almost you are selfish. 
You think Jesus Christ was was there cocaine in this time? Eh? He was high. How can he be high when he's the highest? Eh? Hmm? If you want to see where you are standing with God, as a servant of God, look at those people that you are leading there. Not the congregation. The congregation is filled with people who are still sick. The ones that you have said, this one is my mentor. This one is my mentor. This one is my mentee. You call them sons and daughters, which is biblical. But now it becomes wrong when you now want them to call you father. <laughs> yeah? Check your fruits. If they are selfish, they, they don't give. You don't give, ma'am. You don't give. The, look, look, I'm not talking out of my mind. The Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So if we were to look at Peter, we were, we were supposed to see Apostle Paul there. We, we were supposed to see Apostle Paul there. Do you understand? So if you want to know as a servant of God, where you are standing. Thank you, my girl. We're about to leave. If you want to know where you're standing, look at the ones that you have said. They're under my wing. These ones, they're my mentees. Look at them. Problem, you are too worried about church numbers, about having a one million people stand there when you say, ah, my children. <laughs> so you're just taking everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. Congregation, use those people that are next to that person. Use those people that are next to that person to gauge your servant of God. Use them to gauge. If you go to a church that has a high divorce rate, I want you to argue with me now. The leader has divorced. Argue with me. Argue with me. If you go to a church where there is a lot of, hey, you know, here we have to dress this and we have to dress. Look at the pastor. They cannot come with just jeans. They are always coming with. If you find People saying, I'm the son of, I'm the son of, I'm the son of. And they are whores. Their leader is also a whore. I, I've tested and proved this. I've tested and proved it. I've tested and proved it. If you see those supposed sons and daughters being whores there, know that they are, it's a, they are under leadership. The, the leader is also a whore. Go, you know what? Do this. Do this. You are in a church, right? Look at your, your leader's sons and daughters. And, and, and tell me that they are not a direct representation of their leader. Listen, it goes as far. This, this concept that Jesus Christ gave us to say, look, look at the fruits. Look at the fruits. It goes as far. It goes as far as how they talk. They talk the same. Why? It's because of what Jesus Christ said. By their fruits, you will know them. By the servant of God's action and by the actions of those they lead. An apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I'll give you this one for an example. This one that is saying an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This one, Lepo Gang, who is part of my gang. Lepo used to wear makeup full day. She used to be a makeup wearer. Makeup wearer. Now, bit by bit, she's coming. De she's becoming desensitized to it. She's becoming desensitized to it. Lebu gang. Why? Look at me. I told them, oh, the subject, you must just learn how to be confident with yourself. It's not a doc doctrine for you to not wear makeup. She's now posting pictures not wearing makeup. Not with her weaves. That she was supposed to sell and give to the church. Praise God. <laughs> Sister Munene was one person who was always like this. But now she's a comedian. She's under. So, servant of God, here's an assignment for you. Here's an assignment. My servant of God, eh? my elders, I honor you, Otogus. Go and look at the people that you are leading. See yourself. And I close. See yourself. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey.
Hey, we need to look after these people that we're leading. Eh? That was morning devotion. Eh? From Apostle Apostle. Eh? Prayer time, two minutes. Yes? Ah, cool. So you sent your first gift today. Hey, may you be increased. May you be increased to send more. Glory be to God, says daughter. Hey, that was good, says Sister Munene. That was too good. Name again. Ah, you are not even at the house yet. What are you waiting for? Yes, Sister Munene. Ah, make it quick. Make it snappy. Hey, my family. Woo! We did it. We did it. And we started late. We started late. But God is good. Sister Kayo says powerful. Sister Kayo is a twog official family member. Ah, I deserve crown or more. Hey, wow. Happy morning for me. I have learned, Brother Sydney says. Hey. <laughs> Sister Awu says powerful apostle. Amen and amen. Sister Ndo, you know you are loved by me. Jimara, my husband is here. Mm -hmm. Be honored to say, when I went off, my king. Aye! <laughs> Sister Messi, talk mentee. We are learning powerful teaching. Amen and amen. Easy says, what, what time do you normally start? It's my first time. Hey! <laughs> we welcome you to the family. We welcome you. We start at 8 a.m. Central African time. 8 a.m. No Sipo, very powerful woman of God. We thank God. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. It is talk prayer time. It's talk prayer time. We love you so, so much. Komutso. Brother Komutso. <laughs> you make me so happy, family. Talk family members, let me see you up in here. Up in here. Praise God. Up in here. Let's go. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. Yes, my beloved, if, if God grants us the gift of life. Brother Komutsu started. Talk. Hey. Let's go. Let's go. Talk, family members. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Reveal yourselves. Reveal yourselves. In the name of the Lord. Ah. Huh? I just saw about seven or eight. Let's go. Talk family members.